believers? Come on, I like to stay on the straight and narrow way, don't you? I like to stay on the highway, amen? Hallelujah to God. I don't like detours. I don't like sidetracks. Amen. I started out 49, uh, 45 last night to my son's house and there was trees all over the road and you couldn't get through. Had to take a detour and went the long way around. I don't like detours. Well, I didn't know if there's any trees down on the detour or not. But you know, I don't like detours. I like to stay in the Word of God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we kind of get deviated from the Word of God and we kind of get messed up on a sidetrack somewhere. I call it a rabbit trail sometimes. Sometimes we get on a rabbit trail, but God's not on a rabbit trail. Amen. Hallelujah to God. He is the Word made manifest in the flesh and dwelt among us. And can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we do for Him in the kingdom of God should be according and lined up with the Word of God. If we want to see manifest in our lives the miracles that we need to see, it has to be according to the Word. God can't anoint anything that's not in His will. Come on, anything that's not His Word, God will not put His approval on it. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning. Amen. I like to talk about the beginning because that's where it all started. Amen. Someday we're almost in the end time now. We're close to the end. But I like to talk about the beginning and how it started in the beginning when God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. He is God tonight. Amen. And there is none other. Glory to God. Hallelujah he said to do it. That's how we do it. Uh, amen. Glory to God. We don't do it by our own ideas or our own opinions uh, or anything that we think up or anything that we feel. Uh, amen. Glory be to God. If it feels good or if it don't feel good. Uh, amen. We need to do what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. I didn't feel too good when I got under conviction uh, and when sin was ruling my life uh, and Jesus was drawing me to the Father. Uh, I didn't feel too good. Uh, but it was God anyhow. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, Praise the Lamb of God when God's doing a thing in your life. It don't always feel real good. Sometimes He humbles us down really low. And sometimes we're on our face saying, God, I'm a miserable creature. One of the prophets of old said, Amen, Lord, God, He felt like a worm. The Bible even called Jacob a worm. The worm Jacob. Sometimes we feel like, Amen, in our spirit, we need to humble ourselves before a mighty God. And surely tonight we do. We need to humble ourselves and say, God, you are God. Lord, you are God. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Without you, I can do nothing because you are the Lord and you sit on your throne. Hallelujah to God. And we bow before you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm not bound to no other gods. I got a made up mind, Brother Pat. I'm not bound to the gods of this world. I'm not bound to the gods of religion. I'm not bound to the gods of heresy and falsehood. But I will bow to God Jesus. Hallelujah. I will humble myself at his feet and I will call him Lord. Hallelujah. I will call him Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. I will say he's God. Glory to the Lamb of God tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God created the heaven and earth, we all know the story. Hallelujah. And then he decided to make man and put him on this planet. And then after he did that, he took a rib out of Adam, put him to sleep, and made the woman. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so here we are and then he told them to multiply and replenish the earth sound like it had already been plenished and replenished we won't get into that doctrine but <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah amen glory to God well I won't go there because we don't have time but I could, <laughs> I could. hallelujah what does replenish mean that's right. 
Do it over again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now the serpent in chapter 3 verse 1 was more subtle than any of the beasts of the fields. I'm going to say tonight they don't like snakes. I don't either. I don't take them up. I kill them. Amen, sister. I don't take up serpents. I don't handle serpents. Come on, amen. I kill them. Hello. And I want the devil to know that. You can know that tonight. Amen. I've been in serpent hell and beans. I watched them take them out of the box and play with them and put them back in the box and take them home. And I guess they fed them after they got home and brought them back to church again and took them out of the box and played with them again. And that meant they had power with God. I'm sorry. You ain't got no power with God if you don't believe the truth. When you start believing the truth of God's holy word, hey, then you have Power. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. That word take up means to pick it up and throw it out of the way. God meant, amen, in the Middle East where there are a lot of serpents, amen, that are poisonous. If you were in a crowd of people and there was danger from a poisonous snake, you could pick it up by the power of God and get it out of the way so nobody get hurt. He didn't mean take them to church, put them in a box, amen, play with them, take them back home, feed them, and bring them back to church again. I'm sorry, but that's false doctrine. Amen. But I'm not saying those folks won't go to heaven. If they don't get bit, they, if they get bit, they might go a little early. <laughs> That's all right. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm, I'm moving on this train. It's moving on and I'm moving. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. I might get there a little early or maimed or something, you know. The Bible said don't tempt the Lord. I don't believe we ought to tempt God with anything. Come on. Amen. I don't believe in tempting our God. Amen. Hallelujah. God cannot be tempted with man. Amen. Glory to God or any sin or the devil. Hallelujah. The serpent was subtle. Religion is subtle. It's sneaky. It's conniving. It's twisted. Come on, amen. But the Bible said, amen, a wayfaring man, though a fool, would not err in the ways of God. Come on, if we really love God tonight, amen, it'll be clear. It'll be plain. And if it's not plain to you, you pray and seek God. Hallelujah, until the Holy Ghost makes it plain to you. Amen, glory to God. Because it's not confusion. God is not the author of confusion. But peace in all things. Hallelujah. And our God reigns tonight. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm glad, Brother Donnie, I know a God that reigns. Amen. Glory be to God. He can be God over a tornado. He can be God, amen, over a terrorist. He can be God over anything or any time or any place. Amen. Glory be to God that He speaks His word. It'll be like He says because His word is forever settled in heaven. And though heaven and earth pass away, the word of God will never fail. God is His word. Word. Hallelujah. Woo. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Sure, he said that. You can have any tree, but that tree right over there. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You'd call it an apple tree, a pear tree, a peach tree, or whatever you want to call it. But the Bible said it was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. So somehow I believe there was only one. Right. We'll move right along. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there either. <laughs> Folks, call it an apple tree. Why would you call it an apple tree? That's not what the Bible said. Man's tried to change what God said and twist it into something else. So let's move on. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, hath God said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. God didn't say not to touch it. He said, Don't eat it. In the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You will not die. You won't surely die. You won't surely die. A lot of people are eating the wrong spiritual food. And the devil saying, You won't surely die. Yes. 
Sure they will. Sure they will. That's all you got to do is eat some poison spiritual food and it'll bring death into your spirit and you start believing it, you start living it, you start walking it. It will bring death to you. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah to God. All that come to the Father must come by Him. Amen. Glory be to God. There is no other way to the gates of pearl. Amen. Glory be to God outside of Jesus Christ. Uh, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess uh, that Jesus is Lord. Uh, to the glory of God the Father. Uh, hallelujah. Come on now. You can dress it up, fix it up, make it look good, make it look pretty. You can do whatever you want to. Uh, but false doctrine will bring death to your spirit. <sighs> Paul said I'm set for the defense of the gospel of Christ what did he mean by that he meant I'm going to preach truth you may hear heathenistic doctrine you may hear doctrine that's not true but I'm going to tell you what the truth is and then you do whatever with the truth you want to do but amen my job is to see that you hear it amen at least once hallelujah to God the Bible said to speak the truth in love amen glory be to God and we need to know what the truth is tonight Yes, amen. You can't obey it if you don't know it. Amen. If we don't know it, we can't obey it. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve didn't even know what it was to. They didn't know what it was to sin. They didn't know what it was to cuss. They didn't know what it was to lie. They didn't know what it was to steal. They didn't know what the, 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 there was such a thing. Stephen was in a coma for six weeks, rehab hospital for six weeks, lived with me for six weeks, and then going to therapy, 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 therapy. And whenever to that, we were talking about technology the other day, and he said, Mom, after two years, he said, Mom, things have changed so much. He couldn't believe how much the world had changed in two years when he could look at it and see it for what it was. But I'm here to tell you tonight, it's going to change even more. And you might as well fasten your seatbelt and get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. And get the word of God in you. So when the world changes around you, you don't change with the world. Hallelujah. If you believe a lie, the Bible said in the last days, because people would not receive the love of the truth, they would believe a lie and be damned. Is that the word? God don't lie. God's not a man that he should lie. Come on, but God wants you to know the truth. What you eat is what you become. Yes, amen. What you eat is what you become. I don't want to go there, Lord. Uh, Come on, amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pastor said, don't go there, be nice. <laughs> if I said, how many tonight like, uh, who I was talking to somebody last night over second, how many here tonight like Big Macs? You probably wouldn't have to raise your hand. <laughs> You'll get it after a while. <laughs> Is that okay? That, did, that worked all right, didn't it? That went all right. That went over okay. Okay. <laughs> we are what we eat. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We are what we eat spiritually. Yes, amen. If we, if we eat spiritual lies... That's where your faith will lie. Whether good or bad, and it's got to be bad. It couldn't. Uh, 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 lies from the lies from religion cannot increase your faith. All it does is give you excuses. Excuses, excuses. I hear them every day. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody ever had any excuses? Yeah. <laughs> well, I would obey God, but. Yeah. Well, I would love my enemy, but. Well, I would pay tithes, but we've always, come on, it's getting quiet again. <laughs> has anybody got, has anybody out there got any excuses? Uh, well, there's some honest children over there raising their hand. <laughs> but see, with God, there's no excuses. 
Once we've heard it, once we've read it, once we see it, once we know it, now you got to see it. It's got to get in your spirit. you got to see it with your spirit. That's why he said, let him that I have eyes to see, see those that have ears to hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. So whatever we eat doctrinally, that's what we become. i got to talk to somebody tonight. That's what we become. If you believe the truth, you'll be a light to the world. If you believe what the truth is, you'll be a shining light to everybody that's around you. You don't even have to say anything. You'll just be a light. You'll just light up like a light bulb. I'm talking to somebody. Amen? Why? Because Jesus is the light of the world. He's a city set on a hill. Hallelujah to God that cannot be hid. He said you would be the light of the world. You would be like a city set on a hill. Why? Because he's gone away. And he gets the whole yasata. He sent you the Holy Ghost to do his job. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, go. <laughs> the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Well, he's a liar from the beginning. Jesus said, The devil's a thief and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a father of lies, Jesus said. You want to hear a lie? Just listen to the devil. He'll tell you one. Oh, yeah. He won't waste no time either. No, he won't. Come on, amen. He'd love to tell you some lies. For God doth not know in the day ye eat thereof. For God doth not. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. Boy, that sounds good. Let's be like God's. <coughs> well, the Bible talks in the New Testament kind of like that, don't it? If you get filled with the Holy Ghost and humble yourself to Jesus and walk in the Spirit of God and walk in the will of the Father, the Bible said, "They that are led by the Spirit of God shall be called the sons of God." What's that? Right. Amen. Am I preaching right? Amen. Shall be called the sons of God. Yes, Amen. Yes. But we don't exalt ourselves to, to profess to be gods, do we? No. No, we're servants in the kingdom. Come on. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But sounds good, don't it? Oh, here we are. We're in the garden. We got everything we want and everything we need. Now we can be like God. All we have to do is eat that fruit over there on that tree. Whatever color it is, whatever. Look, that's all we have to do. <coughs> but God did say they die. Uh -huh. The serpent said, No, you won't. That's just like the devil. You feel condemned about sinning sometimes. You think, well, man, I shouldn't do that. That won't help me spiritually. I might go to hell over doing that. The devil say, oh, go ahead and do that. It'll be all right. You'll never get caught. You'll never get caught. You'll never get caught. You'll never get caught. Does anybody ever hear that voice? You'll never get caught. You'll never get caught. You'll never get caught. You'll never get caught. Sure you'll get caught. Jesus said it'd be shouted from the housetops. Boy, that sounds like caught to me. How many of might be put on TV? Some of them have been. Come on, don't laugh about that, but some of them have been. They thought they had it covered. They thought they had it hid. They thought they had it all taken care of. Amen. But God said it'll be shouted from the housetops. And from CNN and uh, NBC and ABC. and Boy, you better watch out. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's the devil. He'll lie to you and make you think you can hide it. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Getting quiet in this house. That's okay. We're moving right along. <laughs> when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he ate it. My oldest son told me a few months ago, he said, Mom, you don't know the power that women have over men. I said, God, I missed it somewhere. <laughs> I missed it someplace. <laughs> that wasn't my first first thought, but it wasn't though. My first thought was, son, I thought you was in control of everything around you. That was my first thought. I didn't say it, however. Because he, he gets this rambunctious thing in him every once in a while and he likes to preach a strip to mama. So I kept my mouth shut that time. 
But I couldn't believe he said that. <coughs> but then I'm looking at the Bible right here. Now I'm believing it. <laughs> Amen. Woman again. Now I'm believing it. <laughs> you have to know him to know what I'm talking about. He's one of these control guys. You know, I mean, he's a computer analyst, so he's got to be in control of whatever's going on, you know. <laughs> he's very smart in a lot of things. So they ate it. So what happened? Uh-oh. Party's over. Party's over, amen. Sometimes you can sin. You can sin till you can't turn back. You may get back to God, but there's some things you can't undo. Hello? Hello. There's some things you can't undo. The Bible said, Whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. That applies to the women too. There's some things we can't fix it after we've done it. We may get back to God. We may repent. But we still got to reap. Oh. Now I'm not. Hang on now. This gets better. I promise. I'm going somewhere. It gets better. If preachers preach like they used to preach, pastor knows what I'm talking about. They preach hell so hot. Amen. You can feel it. You can feel it. I mean, you'd be you'd be scared to death to go to church if you had one little sin in your life. Because you just knew that preacher was going to preach on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody remember them days? Oh, yeah. Hell, there's about a hand, there's about four here that remembers them days. <laughs> Lord, help us, Jesus. Maybe y'all didn't come from where I come from. <laughs> Me and Pastor, we come from some. <laughs> Me, Sister Daisy, Brother Pat, we come from some hardline folks. Yes, good old days when times were bad. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now their eyes are open the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made them aprons now they're under condemnation and godly sorrow now they're scared now they're walking in fear before they had faith and communion with God fellowship with God every day the voice of God would come down in the cool of the evening and talk to them amen so now buddy they gotta fix some stuff they gotta cover some sin we got to go here tonight. I know I know you probably don't like it, but it's okay. It'll be all right. We got to go here, okay? I'm not God. He is. That's all I know. He knows what he's doing. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Some folks come to church to hide out. Hiding out from a past experience. They're living on a past shelf. <sighs> some folks get nervous if folks ain't seen them do something for a few weeks they think well I better do something <laughs> I know y'all are praying for me aren't you now Donnie Miller you and I have talked about the Bible enough you pray for me brother okay <laughs> we said talk about scripture over and over again, man, him and Anita. Amen. Went out to their house one morning and had squirrel gravy. And squirrel for breakfast and biscuits and gravy. And my goodness. That old Donnie, he knows how to hunt. I'm telling you what now, if you don't know how to fish and hunt, and <laughs> you may wish you did someday. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they hid themselves. Why did they hide themselves? Because they were guilty. When we have sh sin in our lives, we have shame when we stand before the presence of God. When sin is in us, we can't stand before the presence of God without feeling shame unless we have a reprobate mind. Now we can wound our conscience and sear our conscience until we just go ahead and sin and it don't bother us anymore. Stand in the presence of God with sin in our lives and it just don't bother us anymore. 
And the Bible said we would be turned over to a reprobate mind. A mind that will not receive the truth. A mind that is not willing to accept the truth of the word of God. A mind that is so deceived that it becomes reprobate. And then be damned, the Bible said. No hope anymore. You can't play with sin, children. I know, you know, we... Uh, I can't help it. Do the work of an evangelist. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort up with all long suffering and doctrine. Thank you, Jesus. I'm encouraging myself in case you don't know what I'm doing. We understood that. Thank you. That's just a daisy. And the Lord God came. He called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice. The voice. Adam said, I heard thy voice. The voice of the Lord came into the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Whoa, who told thee thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman. <laughs> Uh, what woman you give me, Lord? Yeah. Uh, what woman you give me? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right. Don't get nervous. <laughs> and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And I, and I did eat. He didn't have a will to choose. He couldn't say no. He wasn't the head of the house. He couldn't be a covering over his wife and teach her what was right and what was wrong. Boy, I know no it's getting quiet. We can quit right here and have an altar call, can we? And the Lord God said... <laughs> See, this has to be fun. If it ain't fun, we won't like it. <laughs> Christ is ahead of man. Man is ahead of woman. Amen. God anoints women to preach, but that's the anointing. That's right. Uh -huh. That should be. They would be prophetess in the last days. Come on. Yeah. It's a good thing you said that, right? I have to just sit and listen to everybody else. <laughs> but once in a while, he lets me say what he wants me to say. That's not my idea. Trust me. This is not my idea. <laughs> and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Hey, it don't matter who causes you to sin. You're still going to have to pay the price. Amen. It don't matter if it's your children, if it's your husband, if it's your wife, if it's your mama, if it's your daddy, if it's your grandpa, it don't make no difference who it is. Whenever you've got family members that are trying to entice you and get you to do things with them that you know you should not do, just remember, you're the one that's going to pay the price. Just remember. Have enough backbone to stand up and say, no, I don't do that. The Bible tells me not to do that. I don't do that. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Now it's the snake's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. We just pass it on. Well, it's their fault. Well, if they hadn't told me to do this, or if, they, if, things, if circumstances hadn't been different, if it hadn't been so rough, and if it hadn't been this, and if it hadn't been that, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, wait a minute. The Bible tells me greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And it doesn't make any difference what the devil throws in your way or who throws it in your way through. Amen? Glory be to God. The God in you is bigger than that. And the God in you can give you strength enough to resist the devil no matter who he's operating through in my talk and right tonight. Hey man, this is the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Let's don't make excuses. Let's don't blame somebody else. Let's man up and woman up and say, hey, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God, it was my decision and I made it and I did it. Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. 
Now you want to get in a curse? You want to walk under a curse? I don't. I don't. I think I have in my spiritual life at times. I didn't know. I didn't know the difference. Come on, I didn't know. I didn't know that a child of God could walk under a curse. Don't shout me down now. <laughs> We're listening. We're, We're listening. listening. I was covered by the blood, saved, yeah. But if you walk in disobedience to this, you're under a curse. All right. Yes, I can. Yes. Hello out there. Is anybody out there? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Did you know if you don't pay tithes, you're under a curse? You didn't? Did you know that? Yeah. I know. There's a pentecost. I've had pastors tell me there's Pentecostal people who don't believe in paying tithes. I can't believe it. I mean, I believe it. They told me so. I got to believe it. I believe it. But they don't believe in paying tithes. Don't believe in giving to God. Freely you have received, freely given. The Bible said, "Come on, Amen." Well, the Bible said you're cursed with a curse. Amen. One of the prophets of old said you're cursed with a curse because you've robbed God in tithes and offerings. Well, okay. Hallelujah. Moving right along. What do you think keeps the lights on in this place? Amen. What keeps the heat going and the air conditioning going and all that kind of thing? Amen. The, come on, amen. The tithe that you put in. Amen. The 10% that you put in of your increase. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Word of God. The Word. The Word. <laughs> you got it. It's the Word. <laughs> well, if we don't, these are fixed laws. I preach this everywhere. These are fixed laws. The law of God's fixed. It's like I tell everybody every place, it's just like it's just like it's just like it's just like gravity. Come on, amen. We have a fixed law on this planet called gravity. Gravity, what's gravity? Gravity is if you put something up here and you let go of it, it's gonna go down there. It's a fixed law. God made it that way. Why did he make it that way? For our good. Come on, amen. So we'd stay on the planet, not float through outer space somewhere. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. There's fixed laws in the Bible. We try to get around them. We try to go under them. We try to go over them. We try to get. We try to do everything we can do, but obey them. Why don't we just obey them and be happy? If we just obey them, we'd have a better life. I'm not saying you won't have valleys. I'm not saying you won't have trials. I'm not saying you won't have tests. But if you just obey the fixed laws of God, you'll have a better life. Amen. One of the fixed laws of God is forgive your enemies. Amen. If you're not willing to forgive your enemies, guess what? Amen. You're bringing trouble onto yourself. Yeah. Amen. There'll be a root of bitterness spring up within you and it'll grow in you that can turn into any kind of disease. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hello. You can't carry a grudge. Amen. And plan on going to heaven. Right. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You got a grudge, you need to get rid of it. You need to get down and pray through. I don't mean you have to be friends with your enemy, but that does mean you've got to forgive. The Bible said if we don't forgive them, our Father in heaven won't forgive us. Right. And don't tell me, amen, we're not going to make some mistakes before we get out of here. I'm not planning on it, but I probably will. And I want to have the mercy of God, amen, so that I can go to God and say, God, I need your mercy today. Please forgive me. Amen. Come on, amen, hallelujah. The flesh will mess you up. Amen. The flesh will fail. Come on. Hallelujah. What is a curse? I don't want to be under a curse. Amen. Deuteronomy. Amen. Glory to God. 26, 27, and 28 talks about the curses of God. You'd be cursed in the field and cursed in the city. Cursed when you go out. Cursed when you come in. You'd have curses in your body and all kinds of other curses on your family. Come on. I'm not talking to somebody tonight. I don't plan on walking under the curse of God. Come on. Hallelujah. If it, if it hair lips the devil and goes against everybody I know, I don't want to be under the curse of all my God. All right. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God put a curse on the serpent. He wasn't a snake at that time. He wasn't a snake at that time. Apparently not. But God put a curse on him. And here's what God said to the serpent. You thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. 
And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Amen. He might not even look like a snake. He might look like a lizard. He might look like a crocodile. I don't know what he looks like. i got a picture in my mind, but that don't mean nothing. <laughs> but he's on his belly, the Bible said. Hallelujah. God put him there. He said, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman. God, the voice of God, the Word of God. Don't ever forget the Word of God is above His name. God said His Word above His name, did He not? Yes. That's what He said. His Word is above His name. He said, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is where I was coming to. We're in the body of Christ tonight. We're in the kingdom of God. We're in the church. We're born again believers. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. We have the Word of God in us. If we study this book, you'll have the Word of God in you. Amen. When the Word of God gets in you, written on the tables of your heart, you'll know it. it doesn't, it's not just something that you memorize to come to Sunday school and say, well, I read so many scriptures last week. It's something that God puts in you by the Spirit of the Lord. And you know that you know that you know. And I, I've got, I feel this just kind of moving around here tonight. You know I can feel it in the Spirit just kind of moving around here tonight. And some folks are thinking, oh, what do you mean by that? Oh, whoa, whoa. I mean, when you have a revelation knowledge, when God's turned the light bulb of the Holy Ghost on in your soul, and that Word is written on the table of your Spirit and your heart, and you know that's what God says. When your Spirit and your mind knows that's what God says. Amen. And you love what God says enough to obey what God says. Yes, amen. We're living in the last days. Yes, we are. We sat over here last night at Steak and Shake. When Brother Steve and I left here, I thought to myself, folks said, well, there's bad storms around Bedford and Bloomington and this and that going on down south and this uh, tornado sirens was going on around here. And I knew some folks that went over. I told Steve, I said, I think we'll just go to Steak and Shake and hang out and then head south. Well, I'm glad we did. I don't like the idea of being in wind that turn over trucks. Come on, amen. Amen. So we sat over there and a little storm blew through here. Not too bad. Amen. Talked about the Lord. And then when I started home and got a call from home, it didn't sound too good. Come on. I mean, it didn't hit where I was at. But, you know, about a mile from where I was at, it did. And, and, and on west of there. But, you know, I, I thought, God, I was so thankful that I, I, I wasn't down there. And, and it was amazing. My son... Because of something that had happened at work had to be where he worked and he wasn't there. Uh -huh. Amen. Working all night. Uh -huh. I'd rather be anywhere as to be in the middle of that, wouldn't you? Yes. Come on. Uh -huh. But here's, here's the point I want to make. When we're living in the days that we're living in, when we know that the earth is groaning and travailing, because of the sin that's on this planet. Amen. And we don't know where the next earthquake's going to be. We don't know where the next storm's going to be. We don't know where the next terrorist attack's going to be. It's, it'd be good to just be covered by God, wouldn't it? Amen. It'd just be good to be covered by God. I heard testimonies, amen, about folks uh, that were headed to the Twin Towers uh, the day that the airplanes hit Twin Towers uh, in 9-11 and something told them not to go to work. Uh, a man plumb out west uh, had a million dollar business deal laying on his desk uh, in the Twin Towers uh, and something spoke in his spirit. He was going to fly into New York City to sign that business deal deal that day and something spoke in his spirit and told him not to go his secretary even called him and said aren't you coming in and he said no I will not be in today amen and thank God he was not there Amen. isn't it good to know you know Jesus Absolutely. isn't it good to know you're in the safety of the arms of God and even if you're in the middle of something, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. I don't know about you, but I like being safe in God. Amen. I like the peace of God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you may not have the best of everything. You may not go everywhere you want to go. Amen. Glory be to God. You may not do everything you want to do, but to just know you're in the safety of God. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, to know that 
you're under a blessing, not under a curse. To know that you're under a blessing, not a curse. To know that you're under a blessing, not a curse. Hallelujah. I'm not going from church to church backbiting about preachers and people and things. Why? Because I don't want to be under no curse. Besides that, it's not in my spirit that I want to do that. Hello. Amen. Come on. Amen. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to live that kind of life, Sister Daisy. Amen. Glory to God. If that stuff starts getting in my spirit because of association, trust me. I get rid of it. I pray it out. Amen. Glory be to God. I be careful. Amen. Glory to God. Who I spend time with. Is anybody out there hearing me tonight? I said, I be careful who I spend time with. Come on. Amen. You can't eat at the table of God and the table of devils. You can't have fellowship. Come on. Amen. With people that won't keep their Shut about their brother. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. I will put enmity. David wouldn't even say anything about Saul. Saul was as backslid as he could be. He was in a backslidden state and in a mess. And David's men had a chance to kill him, and David said no. Don't touch God's anointed. Do, do his prophets no harm. Come on, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God said to the woman, I'm going to put enmity. In other words, you're not going to be friends. You're not going to have fellowship. You're not going to be cohorts. You're going to be enemies. Between your seed, the seed of the serpent, and her seed, the seed of the woman. God said to the serpent, I will put enmity. I will put warfare. Between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. This is a prophecy concerning the coming of Jesus. Who is the seed of the woman? Jesus, Jesus is the seed of the woman. Come on, amen. Amen. And God said, I'm going to put warfare between the seed of the serpent, every lying doctrine, every false devil, every demon of hell, every fallen angel, every spirit of darkness, every principality of the air. God said, I'm going to put warfare between you and the seed of the woman. <clears throat> you got to know your place in God. It's not just about what church you belong to. It's about what God is in you. What word of God is in you. Because you can't be in the church house 24-7. You've got to be on the job. You've got to be with the family. You've got to be at home. You've got to be at Walmart. You've got to be here. You've got to be there. You got. We have to live our lives. So you have to understand the warfare you're in. And God told them in the garden, in the beginning, there's going to be war between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman is Jesus. Who is Jesus anyway? This Jesus who came to be birthed in the womb of a virgin by the Holy Ghost. Who is this Jesus that came out of the womb of a virgin into this planet to, to live in the flesh and to walk among men? Hallelujah to God. And to be born and to be covered by the Holy Ghost in the river Jordan, baptized by John. Amen. Glory be to God that would walk and say, The Father and I are one. I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. Who is this man? Hallelujah to God that walked on this planet between whom there would be warfare between him and the seed of the serpent. Jesus. Jesus. You wonder why the devil hates you? You wonder why he comes against you? You wonder why he fights Holy Ghost churches? You wonder why he wants to shut down Holy Ghost believers? Come on, is anybody out there tonight? It's a prophecy God said in the garden would happen. Amen, glory be to God. But guess what? I'm going to tell you right now tonight. We win. I've read the end of the book. Hey, come on. When we stay in the Word of God, we win. Ah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is this Word of God? 
came out of the woman Mary. He is the word. What is the seed? Line of Judah, pastor said. Seed is the word of God. Seed is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Seed is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. You want the seed in you, you got to get the word in you. You want the seed in you, you got to get the word in you. You want the seed in you, you'll have to get the word of God in you. And when the word of God gets in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind, amen, glory be to God, the devil's a loser any day of the week, any time of the day. Come on! My God, somebody help me preach. Lord Jesus, what did he say? He said, the seed, it shall bruise thy head. The woman's seed will bruise the head of the serpent. Come on, I said, the woman's seed will bruise the head of the serpent. Come on. The word bruise, I looked it up in Hebrew. Amen. It means, glory to God, to break. Amen. Glory to God, to ruin. Amen. Glory be to God. I want you to know tonight. Amen. Glory to God, we're supposed to be doing that because we are the seed of God in the earth and the seed of God is in us. Amen. Uh, I'm kind to quit. We're going to close this out soon. I mean, I'm telling you tonight, I don't know about you, but I know I'm the seed of God. Amen. I may not be, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. And the seed of God is in me. Somebody say, the seed of God is in me. Anytime the word of God is sown in your spirit, that's God's seed. And it's being sown in you. Hey Amen. If you've got fertile soil for that seed to grow in, it'll grow up and it'll bear fruit. It'll produce faith. It'll produce confidence. It'll produce miracles. It'll produce love. It'll produce joy. It'll produce peace. Hey, hallelujah to God. When we get God's seed in us. Amen. Amen. I got he told the woman, your seed's going to bruise the head of the serpent. There's defeat whenever God's people operate in the seed of God. Hallelujah. And he said, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, the serpent's seed will bruise the heel of the seed of God. That's a painful bruise. That's a painful bruise. If you've ever hurt your heel, that's a painful bruise. Has anybody ever had a heel spur or hurt your heel? That's a painful bruise. But it's not life-threatening. <laughs> it won't kill you. Most of us tonight know what that feels like. I'm not talking about the flesh. I'm talking about the spirit. Sometime or another, the devil's bruised our heel. We've had a bruise or two. Come on, church. We've had a bruise or two. But guess what? That's not the end of the story. <laughs> God, through God, and by His Spirit, we bruise the serpent's head. Come on. Come on, that's a different story right there. Come on, amen. Is anybody out there tonight? I'm talking to us about God. I'm talking to us about what God promised in the Garden of Eden. And through all these thousands of years, God has worked at accomplishing that. Hallelujah. In closing, the Bible talks about the creation being around 4,000 A.D. Or B.C. Around 4,000. About 2,000 years of, of conscience where man lived by their own conscience. Then God called Abraham out of Ur of Chaldees. Told him he could have Canaan land. Through struggles and struggles and struggles, they ended up, the children of Abraham ended up in Egypt. God called them out by Moses. On Mount Sinai, He gave Moses a law, a covenant. 
2,000 years of covenant. Come on. Jesus is born of a virgin. Steps out on the scene. Since then, His death, burial, and resurrection have been about 2,000 more years. Dispensation of grace. A time where we could be born again and come into the kingdom of God by the Spirit of the Lord. That's 6,000 years. We're tonight at the end of 6,000 years and there's another thousand the Bible talks about the millennial reign. Yes. But between the 6,000th year and the 7,000th year in the millennial reign there's a space of time called Jacob's trouble. Where God is trying to get the Jews to wake up. Brother said, he said this brother's a Jew. Try to get the Jews to wake up and realize that they crucified their Messiah so that God can use Jesus to set up His kingdom on this planet and deliver Israel. Now, ha. Now, hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're right in that space of time. We're coming into that space of time where God's people worried about what's going on in the Middle East. God's pulling down dictators, Pastor. God's changing the face, amen, of government in the Middle East. Why is He doing that? Because there has to be a time when God can raise up an Antichrist. God's not going to raise him up, but God's going to let him come up. An Antichrist that will come and demand that everybody take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Yep. Space of time when that's going to happen. God's trying to deal with the Jews. He's trying to get the Jews to realize what happened on Calvary was for them. The gospel was preached first to the Jews, then the Gentiles. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a Jewish Messianic church right now in Bloomington. Right. I've been there. Yep. Some of you all, Sister, Di uh, Sister, Di uh, Sister Dixie, I try to start calling you. That's all right. Sister <laughs> Daisy's been there. <laughs> Sister Daisy's been there. We've been there. Jews who have converted to Jesus. There's a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. They're everywhere. <laughs> and they're coming home to Israel. They are. They're seeing what they're seeing the scripture. God's taking the scales off of their eyes. <laughs> and they're realizing that they crucified their Messiah. He's going to come back someday riding on a white horse, wearing a vesture dipped in blood. He's going to step on this planet. He's going to go through the eastern gate that has been closed and sealed all these years. Yes, sir. Woo! Hey! Come on, hallelujah. Right you can preach on that, Sister Daisy. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. Amen. He's going to go right there. Somebody said, well, you know, this is all about the Gentile church. No, it isn't. We're grafted in. Come on, amen. Yeah. We're grafted in to the olive tree. Amen. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. And God's working on getting Israel back. Yeah. Amen. Glory be to God. He wrote her a bill, a bill of divorcement, but he's working on getting her back. Yeah. And he will get her back. Because God is about bruising that serpent's head. And He'll bruise that serpent's head through you. If you'll be obedient to Him. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands out and let's pray. Father God, I thank You for Your Word. We just want to walk in it.